students so today what we are going to explore is the Debye model in the previous lecture we explored the Einstein model and we also saw a problem so the Debye model is more comprehensive in the fact that it assumes all the vibrational motions that is it assumes the vibrational motion in the horizontal direction also so we in this lecture we explore the Debye model so basically we will cover the model itself and then we will explore the thermodynamic properties okay but before we go into the Debye model we need to understand what are the disadvantages of the Einstein model see the issue is what we said in the previous case is you have a central atom here you have the different uh, so suppose these are some axes so this the remaining atoms which is surrounding the central atom the vibration is not that important we said that we assumed in the Einstein model that they are fixed at their own point well, that is a very basic assumption so this is not true for all the crystalline surface so in this model what they will do they will not assume the all the atoms in its vicinity to be stationary but they will vibrate all simultaneously so it will be a collective vibrations of all the neighboring atoms so it means if we are assuming that they will be vibrating simultaneously the neighboring atoms so overall a crystalline atom or crystalline molecule will have 3n degrees of freedom right n number of atoms so it will have x and y and z direction so it will be 3n degrees of freedom so there will be three translational motion corresponding to the movement of the center of the mass and there will be three rotational motion corresponding to the entire crystal so overall we are left with 3n minus 3 minus 3 so it is 3n minus 3 and minus 3 so this is the translational three modes and this is the rotational three modes so it means remaining 3n minus 6 will be the vibrational modes and this 3n minus 6 vibrational modes are due to the neighborhood of the central atom so but to make it a bit simpler what we will assume is let us fix the crystal so that this translational and the rotational is zero translational and there is no center of mass motion so these all goes away so bit simple so that then leaves that with only the vibrational contribution okay so vibrational contribution means you will have terms corresponding to 3n minus 6 3n minus 6 vibration terms so now we have to rewrite the partition function because earlier we assumed all the frequencies are equal and equals to Einstein frequency but here it is a different let us see how we can write out the partition function so the partition function thus becomes how we do we write it so it means I can write this way Q of NVT is equal to this first term will be as it is this is the contribution due to the internal energy mode it does not change much then you will have a big product term this will go from i equal to 1 to 3n minus 6 earlier you will only have three terms qx qy qz remember the last problem which i did now this will be then equal to nothing but q vibrational partition function into h nu i by k t ok or I can write down this as e to the power of minus u by k t into three n minus six and then I can write down instead of this I can write down here as theta v i by So this is the expression fine further I can simplify it further e to the power of minus u by kt so again I have to it's a product 1 goes 1 to 3n minus 6 it will be e to the power of minus theta vi by 2t theta vibrational i by t so this term is well known so it means nothing but I am coming to the same expression that is you have to have a product of all the partition function so now I can take the log of it L and Q because as you know I will only require the logarithmic value I do not have any use 
having the absolute value of partition function. It is always the logarithmic value which is required. So if that is true, then I will do the logarithmic part u by kt, then plus, then this becomes summation. In this case, it will be i goes from 1 to 3 and minus 6 and into ln of e to the power of minus beta e i by 2 t e to the power of e i t. So, this is the expression. So, these vibrations we need to know the vibrational modes that the independent vibrational modes have to be determined from a normal mode analysis. So, the normal mode analysis I have already shown how we will obtain. You remember in the case of CO2 molecule this carbon and this oxygen you have this atom. So, oxygen, oxygen it can either move this way you have this symmetric vibration or when you have the three atoms coming together C O O you can also have asymmetric vibration ok. It, it may be like this or it may be like this. So, these type are called as normal mode. So, in order to CO2 we did it very easily because we know the numbers are less, but what to do when you have numbers are more. So, you can determine them by normal mode analysis, but it involves complex mathematics. So, get all the 3 and minus 6 vibration frequencies. So, there is a obviously an alternative to shorten this normal mode analysis. What is that? So, what we have found out if we are able to find out all the frequencies, these frequencies shall range from high frequency mode of the vibrational mode of a single atom. So, the range is what? High frequency, what is the high frequency modes? High frequency modes are the type of vibration which is at the central and what is the central mode of vibration which is independent of the surrounding atom that is the Einstein model which I have already seen. So, in this case if I draw this again to remember you. So, this is the vibrational of the central part. So, we have seen it is VE. So, any vibration which I will obtain out of 3 and minus 6 will have two range. One is the Einstein model range which is the highest frequency and all other remaining frequencies which are less than the Einstein model. Because when you are uh, focusing on a central atom. So, the central atom will vibrate at the highest frequency or it will have the lowest wavelength and the surrounding atoms will vibrate at the lower frequency or large wavelength. So, I will have to go from Einstein model to this. So, another will be the low frequency modes resulting from the concerted motion. Concerted motion means simultaneous motion of large number of atoms in the crystal. So, it is not possible to identify all the 3 and minus 6 normal vibrational modes of the crystal. So, what is the diff use? That is where the Debye model comes into the picture. The Debye model uses a probability distribution of frequencies. So, instead of having absolute frequency, you define a probability distribution of frequency such that the number of vibrational modes are the frequency range from V to V plus dV. So, it means if the frequencies are between V to V plus dV, the so number of vibrational mode between these two extreme is given by GV into dV, so where GV is the function in frequency. So, it means I can write the expression relating this GV. What is that? So, it is very simple. So, it means that I will write have to write this type of expression GV dv. So, what will be it equal to? So, if I go from v from 0 to infinity all sort of frequencies, obviously we cannot go above this number 3 n minus 6. So, this is the starting path. So, it will be 3 n minus 6. Okay? So, it is a distribution of frequency rather than individual frequency. So, now the frequencies obviously if the frequencies I can write then I can also rewrite the partition function. So, what is the partition function here? which is L and Q. The first term will be the same as before, but only the second term will change. Previously what we had, we had this expression. Okay, Just write down so that it will help you identify the, the compactness of the earlier equation and now when I use the partition functions.
ओके दिस इज द एक्सप्रेशन नाउ इट विल बी रिप्लेस्ड एंड बी रिटर्न एस माइनस के बाई टी प्लस इंस्टेड ऑफ दिस आई विल राइट हियर जीरो टू इन्फिनिटी द फंक्शन जी वी इन टू वट एवर एल एन इट विल बी देयर एल एन ऑफ ए टू द पावर ऑफ माइनस थीटा वी आई बाई टू टी टू माइनस थीटा वी आई बाई टी दिस इन टू डी वी सो दिस द एक्सप्रेशन टेक्स दिस फॉर्म बट इट इज सीन वेन यू हैव दिस टाइप ऑफ एक्सप्रेशन द लो फ्रिक्वेंसीज द लो फ्रिक्वेंसीज विल मेक लार्ज कॉन्ट्रीब्यूशन टू द पार्टिशन फंक्शन सो इट कैन से आई मीन इट इज समथिंग लाइक दैट लपोज यू वॉन्ट टू मॉडल द फ्लो ऑफ सी वाटर सो विल यू बी इंटरेस्टेड इन द वेलासिटी ऑफ ईच एंड एवरी एटम ऑफ सी वाटर नो इट इज नॉट एट ऑल पॉसिबल सो वॉट यू डू वेन यू सॉल्व दिस प्रॉब्लम सट वॉज मॉडलिंग ऑफ सी वाटर फ्लो ऑफ सी वाटर इज यू नीड्स फ्यू वैल्यूज वॉट इज इट यू नीड द विस्कॉसिटी वैल्यू यू नीड द डेंसिटी वैल्यू द टेम्परेचर वैल्यू and then you model the expression based on the different laws of fluid mechanics but when you want to see how ice expands or how ice crystallizes so then you need the information of each and every atom so it means then you have to explicitly spell out the coordinates of each and every atom similar like this so it means when you take of low frequencies similar to like ocean wave which is a large contribution of partition atom you need not to know all the coordinates of all the frequencies that is you know need not to know all the frequencies so what it does is it takes some assumption so it assumes that the frequency distribution of the large wavelength motions in a crystal is similar to that found in solid mechanics to the behavior of elastic waves in a three dimensional continuum which is given by this so instead of counting each and every frequency which is of no use you need to describe a function gv which is coming the origin is the from the elastic waves gv is equal to alpha v square so now i have a bound for this function what is this bound this i can then express gv as alpha v square when v is between Zero to V D. Okay, and it will be zero when V D. Obviously, this particular frequency is very very large than the Debye frequency. So it means that Debye frequency is the cutoff for all the low frequency vibration. so the all the low friction energy if it is between this 0 to vd it will be alpha v square else if it is greater than that it will be zero so you have the bounds here now can we then again modify that expression let us see so we have to determine that parameter how will we determine that parameter let us see so it means i can write a normalization expression something like this i write here from 0 to infinity gv into dv Zero into V D alpha V square into D V. Okay, so I have replaced D V with alpha V square. So this is nothing but applying. It's a straightforward integral. I can do like this: V D cube minus zero, or alpha V D cube by three. Okay, but this we know is equal to three n minus six, isn't it? this will be equivalent to 3n minus 6 because we know that is the number of vibrational modes and if we assume n to be very very high so this 3n minus 6 i can write down instead of 3n minus 6 i write here n simply n so if you do that it will be alpha will become so i just ignore this 6 here because n is very high so i write 3 into n so it will be 9n so alpha will become 9n by vd cube okay or gv then becomes this expression gv then you have a new bound which is 9n 
p square by v d cube which is for v less than or equal to the Debye frequency and when this is v d is it is greater or equal to it will be 0. So, the final expression then leads to L and Q N V T then is equal to minus N U by K T plus then this becomes now we have got a function. So, I will just put this v 9 N by V 2 cube outside because it is a constant and you change the integral from 0 to V D it will be V square ln e to the power of minus h nu by 2 k t 1 minus o by k t into d v. So, this is the expression the final l n q. So, this expression once we have got now we are in a position to develop expression for internal energy for chemical potential for entropy and specific heat we will do that. Okay. So, let us find the thermodynamic properties. So, mm, well I will not write in details So, frequency modes for the internal energy L and Q. So, there are some issues because this integral when you do its exponential term if you refer to the previous slide it is not easy to do you know the closed integral like we did in the real equation of state. So, it has an analytical expression you require. So, if I want to you know if I want to make it very simple. So, l n of q will be equal to minus n u by k t plus 9 n by theta d cube. I change everything to theta 0 to theta d theta square into ln of e to the power of minus theta by 2t and then 1 minus e to the power of minus theta by t the d theta ok. So, I have changed the frequency instead of explicitly mentioning frequencies I have written the entire expression in terms of the Debye temperature or the vibrational temperature. So, this theta is nothing but uh, your uh, uh, I can further simplify this ok. If I want to simplify it further you will get so some terms which is equal to I do not want to write the detailed terms it can be it is there in the Sandler's book just go to the definition. So, it is 9 in theta 2 t d minus 9 n by theta d whole cubed by 0 to theta d ln of theta by t. This is the expression I have just broken this particular integral in two parts. Then what I will do is that again I will simplify this part n u by k t minus 9 n by 2 into theta d by t whole cubed into 1 by 4 theta d by t whole 4 minus 3 n g of theta d by t ok. So, this function g I will just explain what is that, but let me first further simplify it and we will get an expression n u by k t minus 9 n by 8 by theta d by t minus 3 n g this is a function g. What is this function g? this is the entire expression for l and q. So, this function g I can now write down theta d 
by t is nothing but this expression 3 upon t of theta d whole cubed by 0 to theta d by t or I can write down here x square ln of 1 minus e to the power of minus x into dx. So, where x I have assumed it to be h nu by kt which is equal to by t. So, this is the function g. Okay. So, this is the overall expression l and q. This we will be requiring, this expression we will be requiring frequently because whenever you are going for it either it is internal energy or other parts, you will need an expression of l and q. So, this expression of l and q needs to be used when we have now we will be obtaining the thermodynamic properties. So, uh, very simple if you want to do for let us say uh, u. So, u of n v t. So, the same expression will hold like we did earlier, it will be k t square into dou l n of q by dou t. Okay. Same expression. Now, take that l n q and do the this expression, entire expression. So, I will not show the entire steps. What you will get is simply equal to n u plus 9 h v d by 8 into 0 to theta d by t e to the power of minus x 1 minus e to the power of minus x x cube dx. So, you know what is x now? x is the same which I described in the previous slide. So, uh, I can then uh, further simplify n u plus 9 n h v d by 8 plus 3 n k t f. Now, I have come up with the function f theta d by t which is equal to n I can write down a particular term n u d 0 which is a 0 point energy per molecule of a monoatomic Debye crystal 0 point energy okay. plus 3 n k t f theta d by t. This is the expression. So, you can write down what is this u d 0? u d 0 is u plus 9 of n h v d by 8. This is you can write down this is the 0 point energy 0 point energy per molecule obviously per molecule of the monoatomic Debye crystal of the monoatomic Debye crystal. So, now earlier it was g now f another function. So, what is this f? Just I will write down here f of theta d by t here this function f is given like this 3 of theta d by t whole cubed ok whole cube then the integral terms then e to the power of minus x by 1 minus e to the power of minus x x cube dx ok. So, you have one g term pre previously now f. So, you need to evaluate this g and f. So, this is for u. Similarly, we can get for A enthalpy and the specific heat. Let us do that. So, what are the relation between f and g? I just write down. You can just go through the mathematics of it. So, f which is a function of theta d by t is nothing but minus t of d of derivative of this d g of theta d. Okay. So, this is the relation between f and g. So, if you know f and g, now you can also find cv. cv is dou u by dou t. If you do that, you will get 3 n k. Now, you will get another function 3 n k because you have the function in terms of f. So, if you do a derivative of that with respect to temperature, the function f changes to function k. Here, we will define a new function capital K n k k n k k into theta d by t. Okay. 
so now you have another function k and what is this function k k function again which is a function of theta d by t is equal to 3 into t into theta d whole cubed by 0 theta d by t x4 ex by ex minus 1 whole square dx okay this is a function so so you see we have three functions f function for first the g function f function now the k function so these are all we have to determine we have to solve these problems so the cv we have got expression u we have got expression mu is very simple mu of nvt you can easily get if you take the derivative of helmholtz free function with respect to n keeping volume and temperature constant so a is you know it is kt ln q minus kt ln q you take the value of kt ln q minus and take the derivative with respect to n so if you do that you will get this expression u plus 9 h v d 8 plus now i am writing now all this in terms of functions this one mu then s of n v t is equal to this s is very easy to do it is u minus a by t so if you do that again this complicated functions i'm not writing so if you do that it is finally i will be able to write the entire expression as something like this 1 by t write the value of u it is n u plus 9 n h v d by 8 minus 3 n k t f which is a function again of theta d by t minus n u then i am writing the value of a minus 9 n h v d by 8 minus 3 n k t g of theta d by t is the expression so if you see these two cancels out okay so if you these cancels out this is also cancelling out so what you are having is simply 3 n k the function which is theta d minus the function g theta d by t this is the expression for s so we got s we got mu we got cv and we got u we also got a so here we can define all the functions so now what we will have to do is when the f and g and k we have to find out the limiting because we want to see whether at t approaching 0 whether the entropy and the specific heat approaches 0 because that is where the third law of thermodynamics lies so all our theory then becomes confirmed so we do that so in this case let us find the limiting value so as t approaches 0 as t approaches 0 what will happen so your function f that is theta d by t will approach infinity so this will go towards equivalent to pi 4 by 5 t of theta d whole cubed and your g will also be equal to this infinity so this will be going towards pi 4 by 15 by t of theta d whole of cubed and k which is again this theta t going towards infinity i am not showing the limit approaches t equal to 0 you can do that from mathematics involved you take the g and f and g function and apply your mathematics you will get this towards this so now an important thing is we have got what is that t equal to 0 now we will what we will do we will just rewrite the expression for u h a g in terms of this expression when t approaches 0 we will replace the terms of this k f and g with this expression and then perform the integral but let me see what is now important thing is what is the relation between theta d and theta e how are they related to each other so just for your information this particular expression is equal to theta e the Einstein temperature the Debye temperature is nothing but this cube of 6 
or theta e roughly is around 0 0.806 theta d. So, most of the Debye temperature of various atoms are available in literature. So, this was important to know because if we know Einstein temperature, you can calculate the Debye temperature. Okay. So, let us see what the expressions look like when we apply these limits. So, u will be going towards u, this will be going towards this expression, u will be n u d 0 plus 3 n k t pi 4 by 5 into t by theta d by whole cube, this will be there u of n t. Okay. So, obviously, this t is going to 0 means everything is um, becoming 0. So, you will have simply equal to u is equal to n into u d of 0. That is it. Other things all goes away. So, now when you take C v, when t approaches 0, what will you get C v? That is nothing but 12 of pi 4 n k. 5. Now, I will replace all this with the expression which we got earlier whole cube. Okay. So, it again if you take t equal to 0, the entire C v also approaches 0 which actually ap agrees with the, the third law of thermodynamics because the perfectly crystalline matter at t equal to 0, the specific heat tends to be 0. Then A goes to 0 then you have n v t when it t equal to 0 what does the expression of a takes you to n u plus 9 8 9 n by 8 h v d minus pi 4 n k t by 5 t of theta d by whole cubed. So, this again will be equal to n u d 0 this is the 0 point energy minus pi 4 n k t by 5 by t by theta d whole cubed. Just I am rewriting the expression for A. Now, with mu, mu you will get as u plus 9 by 8 h v d minus pi 4 by k t 5 t by theta d whole cubed, which is again takes the form because these two I can collect together I can write that the 0 point energy minus pi 4 k t by 5 by 2 theta d of whole cube. So, we got C v, we got internal energy, we got Helmholtz energy mu remaining is only entropy. So, this is entropy is e important n v when t approaches 0 this will be simply u minus a by t obviously both of them t should be approaching 0 we will use that expression that is from here if you use that expression what you get is simply 4 pi 4 n k by 5 by t by theta d whole cube so it means again this at t equal to 0 if you substitute here it becomes equal to 0 so at t approaches 0 both your s approaching 0 and c v also approaching 0 which confirms the which confirms the third law of thermodynamics. So, what we have done? We have seen the limiting case what is t equal to 0 and we have again rewrite the expression because we cannot get an exact answer for this f, g and k type expression this integrals. So, we have replaced it at the limit where t approaches 0 and then obtained the thermodynamic properties and then we saw that the thermotropy as well as the specific heat approaching 0 which comes from the third law of thermodynamics. Okay, so, in the what we will do in the next class we will take some more problems regarding the heat the sublimation of ice as a problem how to obtain the sublimation of ice using both the Debye model and the Einstein model. For the time being, I will stop here. So, please go through this Sandler's book and uh, follow the derivations of the f, g and k curves and also, also see how they apply limit 
at t approaches 0 and also I have not covered one of the thing which is t approaching infinity. Go through that uh, because you might need to know how you can apply limit on those expressions and get the uh, thermodynamic properties. Thank you. Thank you.